Uh, good afternoon. Hello. One mic. Stop the budget cuts. Stop, Stop the budget, budget cuts. cuts. Money for the people. Money, Money for, for the people. people. Not for real estate. Not for real estate. Not for Wall Street. Not for Wall Street. Not for the police. Not, Not for the police. But for community groups. But for community groups. I'm Charles Barron, Council Member Charles Barron. This is Council Member Christine Richardson Jordan, and we're here with Woo! advocates from our city, yeah! give us a community organization. I'm going to give it to you real and straight with facts. This is a Republican austerity Adams family budget. Say that. Say that. The cuts are unnecessary. Every city agency, 100% of the city agencies that have federal money will lose that federal money. Many of the city agencies are getting pegs. Pegs is a cute name for cuts. Programs to eliminate the gap. That's a cut. And when you hear them talk about savings, that's a cut. So this budget is bleeding the poor. Come on. And when we look at the history of this, this is the annual budget dance. I've done 12 budgets in New York City, six budgets in the New York State Assembly. Every budget cycle is an annual budget dance. What's the dance? The council says that they want their initiatives restored. So at the beginning of the budget process, they cut all the council initiatives so that the focus is only on council initiatives. We have a $101 billion budget. $101 billion, and this council is celebrating the reinstatement of $870 million. Come on. $870 million. So you're going to hear them tonight say, hey, it ain't perfect. They shouldn't even use that word perfect in this budget in the same breath. Come on. It ain't perfect, but we did get more waste paper baskets, garbage cans for our neighborhoods, but we did get more money for this program and that program. And you know what? There is some good in some of those programs. We supported a lot of those programs. Let me tell you what they didn't get. We have double digit unemployment Come in on. every black and brown community. And out of the $107 billion budget, there's one Point seven million. One point seven million for workforce development. This budget is a missed opportunity. It's a missed op opportunity to service black and brown communities, poor communities that are in a state of urgency and emergency. And we had the opportunity to bring down poverty. Come on. There's 30 and 40 percent poverty in all of our communities. This budget doesn't touch that. Come on. Come on. There's double digit unemployment in every one of our communities. This budget does not touch that. And they say, well, Charles, there's a limit to the money we can spend. Oh, yeah? Let me tell you the facts. Let me tell you the facts. Wall Street in 2021 had a $51 billion profit. Wall Street in 2022 had a $58 billion profit for this budget. Wall Street brought in unexpected revenue. They tell you we don't have enough money. We have $6.3 billion in a reserve budget. Speak on it. Waiting for a rainy day. It's raining every damn day for us. What about today's rain? What about today's rain? Now, 
in addition to the $6.3 billion that they have in reserve, they had an unexpected $3 billion come in from tax revenue from the $58 billion. So they had an unexpected $3 billion that came in for this year and another unexpected $1.5 billion coming in for next year. So you had unexpectedly $4.5 billion. Add that on to the $6.3 trillion. But why the hell are you cutting $2 billion from city agencies? Thank you. Thank you. Why wouldn't you take some of that $10 billion that you have to work with and say, you know what? We're not cutting any agency. You know they cut mental health? How are you going to cut mental health when that's one of the reasons why crime is going up? Say that. Say that. Say that. Crime is not going up because we don't have enough cops, because we got 50,000 cops with an $11 billion police budget. Not $5.6 billion. Make sure you put in the pension. Make sure you put in the fringe benefits. It's an $11 billion police budget, and they increased the police budget. Mm -hmm. Cut mental health, cut from the seniors, cut from the youth, cut from hospitals, and increase police budget. Mm -hmm. In addition to their $11 billion budget, in addition to their money for programs, extra programs, they put in $80 million for more overtime. Overtime. Taking more time out to beat us down and arrest us and get paid. Say that. Say that. NYPD's budget of overtime is over $500 million. That's just overtime. The entire city overtime budget is 1.4 billion, one third of it, and he can approve it. He spied on us for the speaker. This is the speaker's guy. And ain't, ain't I telling the truth? Say amen. I won't tell on you. <laughs> Ask the speaker's guy if you don't believe me. 1.4 billion dollars is the entire overtime budget for the city, and the police get 500 million of Shame. that. Shame. Tell Shame. the mayor, Shame. tell the mayor, you can't arrest yourself out of this. Come on. Let's speak on it. Tell, Come on. Tell Mayor Cop that you cannot do a police thing out of this since he's been in office and had $11 billion for his police department, more money for overtime, 50,000 headcount, 35,000 in uniform, 15,000 civilians. And since January to this date, crime is up 41%. When he brought back the street crime unit, let's call it for what it is, ain't no neighborhood safety teams. He's rebranded the same old racist street crime unit that killed Amadou Diallo, Say that. that killed Sean Bell, Say that. that choked Eric Gardner. Say that. That's the same street crime unit he's calling neighborhood safety team. Well, what has happened since they've been in place? Now, I am not a fan of Bill de Blasio. I oppose Bill de Blasio, but this mayor is making de Blasio look like a revolutionary. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> this mayor is bringing back in the, in the prison system, solitary confinement. He's bringing that back. This mayor is against, he's totally against the no cash bail. Check this out, I'm gonna get you in a second. I just wanna put it out there. This mayor is against no cash bail. And every time you ask him why is crime going up, that damn no cash bail bill. And I remember one of his advocates saying, uh, Councilman, how do you explain this? 
A young man got out on bail, and when he got on out bail, he committed a crime, armed robbery. I said, did you say he got out on bail? Well, if he got on out bail, that ain't our bill, because we said no cash bail. So a judge let him out on bail. No cash bail means if you commit a non-violent misdemeanor crime, like many that are on Rikers Island now, that you should get released in your own recognizance because it's non-violent and it's a misdemeanor. So if that's the case, then they should be released. And those statistics say 95% of them did not commit another crime. That's the fact. That's the data. That's the fact. That's the data. It ain't my fact. That's their fact. So no cash bail is working. He wants to end that. He wants to end raise the age. We said 15, 16, and 17 year olds should be in family court and in youth institutions. He wants them in the adult court and go into adult prisons so they can learn how to be hardened criminals and increase the recidivism rate. Crime is happening because of poverty. Crime is happening because of unemployment. Crime is happening because people are out of their minds, mental health issues. So that's where all the money should go and this budget doesn't do that. Finally, as I bring on my co sponsor here. We say to the council members, before you vote yes for this budget, or before you vote for this budget, remember the people elected you to protect the people, not the Adams family. They, they, they elected you to protect the people, and the people are going to be hurt. And how do you get hurt? With a $220 billion state budget, a $101 billion city budget, and we still got poverty and crime going through the roof in our communities. That's my position. I will be voting no for this budget. You can bring any consequences you want. The people elected me. I'm going to be the voice of the people and vote no for a budget that does nothing. Check out NYCHA. They're giving one point six billion to NYCHA. NYCHA has a $33 billion need. And that $1.6 billion for NYCHA capital only goes to the NYCHA residents and developments that are into RAD and PAT, the ones that are into privatizing. If you're not privatizing NYCHA, they don't get none of the NYCHA money, which is insufficient in the first place. Say that. My yes. colleague. Say that. So, when I say fund the people, you say stop the cuts. Mm. Fund the people. Stop the cuts. 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 Give it up for yourselves today because, because it's not easy. It is not easy to go against the grain and talk about what needs to be changed. But that's exactly what this new wave, of which I am probably a part of, claimed we were going to do. That we were going to come here and make change and fund the people. We cannot stand out here with advocates and protest things around this budget and then vote for a budget that does not meet the people's demands. You have to ask yourself, why is this process being rushed? Why so quickly? We have time. Typically there is weeks where we have scrutiny, we have more hearings, we have more input. We allow the public to weigh in more. This budget is being pushed forward really quickly. Why? Because they don't want you to look too closely. 
our black, brown, working class, and immigrant communities have been asked to endure far too much for far too long. We have disproportionately suffered through the pandemic. We have been facing rising rents, lack of adequate housing, lack of mental health care, under-resourced schools, and increasing violence. I cannot support a budget that fails to meet this moment. Come on. And worse, this budget further divests from agencies and services that serve my community and many like it citywide. While most have focused on additional funding for the member designated initiatives, please understand that these small increases for council members pet projects are in stark contrast to deep cuts across the board to departments that provide essential social services. The pattern is clear. The city divests and underfunds our public schools, forcing council members and exterior organizations to fight for initiative funding to fill a void that should not be a void because we should be funding. This, de this desperate competition for funding takes place as the city has raked in more revenue than expected. We're placing $2 billion into a rainy day fund of over $8 billion already into reserves at a time when there is great need. This is in the context of what is deemed acceptable to cut $1 billion of funding to Department of Education, including over $245 million for public schools and teachers instead of increasing their support. At the same time, there's an additional $200 million in funding for charter schools. The mayor's justification for cuts was to lower was lower enrollment numbers from the past year. This is a slap in the face to the principals and teachers who have worked valiantly throughout a pandemic and resulting in virtual learning. Even with COVID related challenges, our teachers have been underpaid while dealing with crowded classrooms and lack of school supplies and minimal support services. The 215 million new funding being allocated to charter schools is being sent there instead of supporting our public school system. This budget continues the conservative crusade to privatize public services. The people should also know that this budget cuts 98 million from, from DOHMH, uh, the Department of Health and Mental mental hygiene. So we're cutting mental health. Okay, around half of it is being taken from child and family services. Okay, we're also seeing 461 million is being cut from DHS. Despite the lift service around addressing the mental health crisis and the increased violence both in schools and streets, it was somehow deemed acceptable to cut funding to the departments in charge of mental health and homeless services. This is asinine. Right. Some of the direly, direly needed council requests and designations were indeed met, including in SYEP, community schools, and capping the current uh, corrections officer's headcount. Uh, this funding should be taken at the bare minimum of what is needed. And while the media and the mayor's office highlight these concessions as significant achievements, they need to be accurately evaluated in the context of the entire budget with these deep cuts that are unacceptable. Exactly.